Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers or should I say imaginary numbers. No, correction, it's complex numbers. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist with, uh, you know, problems and also basics of complex numbers. Okay, so we in this case we have a tangent equation. Now if we had tangent z equals 1, that would be pretty easy to solve. We could just say, hey, z is equal to pi over 4. And then we could add multiples of 2, two pi, or maybe pi, right? Like n pi. But does this include the non-real solutions, or are there any non-real solutions to this equation? That's a good question. But in this case, we kind of have a non-special angle. Well, well, it's not even like non-special. It's imaginary. Come on. Tangent of an angle is imaginary? How is that possible? In the complex world, everything is possible. So let's go ahead and consider the following identities, uh, which are given by Euler. Cosine z plus i sine z can be written as e to the i z. Beautiful, beautiful expression. This basically turns trigonometry into exponentials, exponentials into trigonometry, a beautiful relationship between several different branches. Anyways, if you replace z with negative z, you get cosine z minus i sine z equals e to the negative i z, and then by adding these equations and subtracting these equations, you get expressions for cosine and sine, which is nice. So this basically allows you to solve any trigonometric equation when uh, z is not a real number. Okay, so this is cosine z and sine z will be e to the i z minus e to the negative i z divided by 2i. You just do the math and you'll get the same answers. Now, we don't need sine and cosine, do we? We kind of. We do need to find tangent because we're given tangent. So we kind of need them indirectly. So tangent is sine over cosine. If you memorize the formula for cos um, tangent, go ahead, you can do use it. I didn't. Usually I just use sine and cosine. So this is sine. I'm going to divide it by cosine, which means multiply by the reciprocal of cosine, which is 2 over e to the i z plus e to the negative i z. You can cancel out the twos, and that's the only thing you can cancel out. Okay. Of course, you can also multiply by negative i, which simplifies this expression a little bit. Okay. I'll talk about that in a little bit because negative i squared is 1. So you can totally forget about it. Make sense? That's just another version of tangent z, which kind of also tells you that tangent z is a multiple of i in some sense. And that kind of makes sense, right? If you look at the original problem, uh-oh, we do have a multiple of i, somewhat, right? Okay, let's see how this plays out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set this expression equal to the tangent value, which is, I had to think about it, right? What am I going to set it equal to? I forgot. Okay, I'm going to set it equal to negative 3i over 5. And then from here, hopefully we can find the value of z, which is actually going to be pretty interesting. And then we're going to compare our answer to the answer from Wolfram Alpha. I always like to compare my answers, and sometimes they're different. And Wolfram Alpha sometimes complicates things for certain reasons. Some people say, oh, it takes the principal value, so on and so forth. Anyways, don't worry too much about it. Let's just go ahead and enjoy the journey. Now, what are we going to do? We can cancel out the negative i from both sides, so we can end up with a rational number. Beautiful. Now, what we need to do is cross multiply. You can also make a common denominator, make a common denominator, but I don't think that's necessary. Let's go ahead and just cross multiply. 5e to the iz minus 5e to the negative iz, this way. And then this way, 3e to the iz, plus 3e to the negative iz. Awesome. It's going to put the a positive iz is on one side and the negative iz is on the other. So subtract this and add that. 2e to the iz equals 8e to the negative iz. And then finally, we can go ahead and cross out the 2, divide by 2, and then write this as 4 over e to the iz. And cross multiply again, this gives us e to the 2iz, because iz plus iz, iz, do you see what iz? Okay, it's just a joke I had to make, sorry about that. Uh, it's kind of like, the, I know some people find it lame, but some people like it. Anyways, so 
That's not the answer. I just wanted to indicate that this is a really cool result. Now we can go in different directions from here. Let me tell you. You can square root both sides and you can kind of write it as, okay, if e to the 2 iz is 4, then e to the iz can be 2 or negative 2. Would you agree? And if you don't, uh, you can go ahead and plug it in here and see that it's actually going to work, right? So what does that mean? It means that I can kind of branch off and solve these equations separately. Then shouldn't I be finding two different values for z? Probably, but you could also do it differently. So here's the thing. We could probably, uh, let's just, hmm, let's see. Let's proceed with this. How about this? I can go ahead and maybe um, let natural log both sides or write the two in complex form. Let's complexify the two, shall we? Let's go ahead and write this as follows. e to the 2iz, I mean e to the iz, sorry. I'm going to use uh, the version here. Is hmm, 2 times e to the power 2 pi and i. Nice. So I just wanted to multiply by 1, but it, the comp complexified version of 1. Make sense? This is always 1, remember? This one. So we can ln both sides. iz is going to give us ln 2 plus 2 pi and i. If you don't do this, you're actually going to miss out on this. You got to make sure that you add that uh, as a period, okay? And then the next step is going to be dividing by i or multiplying by negative i, which I like better. Multiply by negative i, multiply by negative i. This should give you a 1 here, and z will be... This one is going to give us negative i squared, which is 1, so that's going to be 2 pi n plus, oops, not plus, minus i ln 2. That's one of the solutions. If you use this one, that should give you something similar, but instead, uh, you need to write the negative 2 as 2 times e to the power i times pi, but don't forget to add the multiples of 2 pi. Make sense? And then when you do the natural logs, you're going to get something like this, i z equals ln 2. You're still going to have an ln 2 piece, but the next part is going to be uh, slightly different. So at this point, after multiplication by negative i, z should be negative i ln 2, and then that's going to give us a 1 plus pi plus 2 pi k. Of course, you can write this as 2k plus 1 multiplied by pi, which is an odd multiple of pi. So z sub 1 and z sub 2, maybe we can kind of write them separately. 2k plus 1 multiplied by pi, minus i ln 2. So the minus i ln 2s do not change and you know guess what this does? Kind of splits it off into two branches but it's not necessary. Let me show you. If you just stick to this e to the 2 iz equals 4 uh, proceeding this way is kind of easier because you can go ahead and kind of multiply by e to the power 2 pi m i again. I just wanted to use a different variable. By the way k and m are all integers and then from here 2 iz becomes ln 4 plus 2 pi mi, and then after doing all the work, this is what it's going to turn into. Should I just tell you what the result is? Pi n minus, oops, supposed to be m, pi m minus i ln 2. Guess what? This just represents multiples of pi. Here, they're split into odd and even. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.